Wonderful. Okay, we're recording now. So Sabrina, tell me what career you have and where you work. So I am technically a licensed social worker through the state of Minnesota, but I'm employed with Big Brothers, Big Sisters of the Seven Rivers region um, out of the Winona office. And is your role there as a, a social worker, as a, um, what? what is your job title? My job title there is match specialist, but I because I got my bachelor's degree in social work, I have to carry the title licensed social worker no matter what if I'm working with people, but they don't require it at Big Brothers Big Sisters. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So what got you interested in being a social worker? I would say probably just the fact that I really wanted to help people and I had to make a quick decision after my associate's degree and it was kind of between criminal justice and social work. So social work seemed like the thing I would excel at the easiest and the fastest and the thing I would be least likely to regret. So I went into social work and it has really helped me utilize my skills and help people to the best of my ability. Okay. Have you had, or when, when did you graduate from college? Um, December of 2019. Oh, wow. Right before the pandemic hit. Yep. Timing is everything. <laughs> yeah, it was really bad timing. <laughs> well, not that you could plan that. So that I don't think anybody planned any of that. Yeah. So then for a licensed social worker, tell me about um, that requires a four-year degree, correct? Yes. To become a licensed social worker, you need a four-year degree. Um, I got a bachelor's in social work. I think that's the degree you have to have to take the ASWB, which is the national exam to get your social work license. And um, there's a lot of other like technicalities that go into it. So I went to mm -hmm. a um, Council on Social Work Education accredited program. If you don't go to an accredited program, it can make things pretty sticky with your licensure and it can make it challenging when you go to receive your master's. Okay, so how long was the test that you had? It to was take? 180 questions and it was four hours long, but it only took me two hours to take it and I got 16 extra questions right. So <laughs> Whew, that's, that's still plenty. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So then is that is that part when you take that test, is that part of your degree program or you finish your degree and then you have to start that out? Yeah. So you finish your degree. Um, I think you have to like actually obtain your degree before you can sign up for the exam. So there's a lot of fees associated with it. You initially apply for your exam. It's like two hundred and ninety four dollars. You have to go through a criminal background check through the state um, and the federal government, you have to get fingerprinted and make sure the fingerprints are good. And then they'll give you the green light to go ahead and apply for your exam. Once you get that green light, you have to pay, I think another $130, some, right around there. Um, and you sign up for the exam in a testing location. Right now it's really weird with COVID though. I got mine before COVID hit. So where, when you were in high school, was this where you, the direction you thought you were going in in social work? No, or is that, had, what did you imagine? I had no direction in high school. I was going back and forth between several different careers. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be an actress. I think the common theme among everything was I did want to help people though. So it just took like exploring what was out there, exploring the financial feasibility of doing certain things and then what I was good at to find that social work would probably be a better option than the other things. Mm -hmm. Did you have, when you were in college, did you have any um, like practicums or job shadows or internships that you needed to do for the program? So for my accredited program, you do have required field work that you have to do. So for the first, I wanna say it was my first semester of the program, um, you had to do a field experience, which was 100, 160 hours, I think it was something like that. And I did that at the Benedictine Adult Day Center. So we just went there and did activities with the elderly folks there, um, spent time with them. It wasn't a lot of like office type social work. It was mostly just interacting with clients. And then when I did my final semester of college, that's when you do your 
final placement, which is actually called your practicum, and that was 480 hours, so it was about 30 hours a week. And then you also do like a seminar class. So we did our practicum four days a week, and then we had class on Friday in person. Um, and I did my practicum at Dakota County Child Protection in Apple Valley. Wow. So what was with, you know, I mean, obviously with social work, you have privacy and confidentiality issues. So don't go into any of that, but what has been most surprising to you about being a social worker? I don't know if there's been a lot of surprises. It is kind of what I expected, but it's affecting me a little differently than I anticipated it affecting me. So like I always knew there was going to be office work and I always knew there was going to be bureaucracy and laws and stuff that would get in the way. Um, and that stuff I think would have been the most disappointing things I've come across is like I knew they were coming, but I didn't know they would obstruct my ability to do my job so much or take away from client contact so much. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes paperwork. That's <laughs> every time we do these career presentations, that's the negative is all the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. And I know, especially for like the, the fields where um, that are human focused, like healthcare and human service. Yes. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that people just don't realize goes into all of that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's incredible. So and very unexpected for many people. Yeah. So then what does um, what is and as much as you're able to share with us, what does a typical day look like talking about paperwork? In my role right now, I can share pretty much everything I do. I actually have it written down. Just let me find it. I did one of these for another class. So um, so on a daily basis, it's kind oh, of perfect. all the time because I am a match specialist. So I focus on enrolling bigs and littles, but I also focus on like making matches and supporting them once they're made. Whereas like we also have match support specialists that focus on the matches after they're made. And then we have enrollment specialists that focus on making the match. So I do everything because that's how I work best. I couldn't really do just one thing because I think I would get very bored. Um, so uh, my days can be a lot of different things. Some days I might choose to focus more on getting matches made. Some days I might focus more on supporting those matches. If I'm making matches, my day can be spent doing interviews with bigs, doing interviews with littles and their parents. Little interviews are like three hours long Big interviews are around two hours long. I could be running background checks. I could be doing reference calls, um, passing training information on to our bigs, <sighs> reviewing applications that come in and seeing if there's any red flags on them, reaching out to people to answer their pre-screening questions or ask my own. Uh, past those steps, I would look at the people I've gotten through that process and see who would be a good fit for each other. And then I would be talking to the families and the bigs to see if they agree that the other person would match them well, or I will start back at square one. Um, once the match is made, I focus on doing match support calls. So in the first year of a match, we call the big and then we alternate between the little and the parent. We call them monthly. And we ask them the same questions every month to assess for child safety and also evaluate if the relationship is developing at an appropriate pace and help them if any issues come up or if they have any child safety concerns. Um, after that first year, we do quarterly calls. I also help with um, coming up with reach events, which we haven't really been able to do too much of with COVID. But when COVID's not a thing, we plan activities for people to be able to do in our offices and in the community. Um, and I just answer phone calls and stuff if people do have any other random questions. Plenty of phone calls or virtual meetings like we get to have now. Yeah, I do. I also <laughs> do a lot of training. Yeah, because I have to, on top of working at Big Brothers Big Sisters, I still have to maintain my social work license so I don't get in trouble by the state. So I have like random trainings I have to do to get continuing education credits. So then do you have, well, how many hours do you have each year of the, of those continuing education credits? For your social work license, it's every two years that you renew it. So in that two year period, you have to do 40 continuing education credits. Okay, well, that's not horrible because that's like going to conferences and trainings and things like that, correct? 
Yep, you can do right now, you can do 50% of them as like pre recorded webinars that are not interactive and 50% of them have to be live. So you can do them via Zoom um, or you can do them in person as long as you can interact with the person speaking and interact with the people there. Uh, but before COVID, I think it was 75%, 25%. So 75% had to be in-person trainings and 25% could be other ones. The biggest challenge there is the financial burden that it can present because each training I'd say is roughly three credits and around a hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. So that is an investment. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just in time, but in money that yeah. is. So then is there, um, what, um, how do I ask this? Like in some fields, it's really recommended that you go for the master's degree. Is that similar with social work that that's really, um, where you want to be at or is, um, having the, the bachelor's degree pretty much and the license um you're pretty set to go i would say you definitely should go get a master's in social work you can get a job in bachelor with a bachelor's degree but it's not going to be very sustainable for you if you want to start a family or if you want to buy your own house or whatever it may be you definitely want to get a master's degree it will open up more doors for you and while there are a lot of jobs in social work, there's also a lot of competition. All social workers are really competent, it seems. So you've always got like really great qualified people that are going against you for a position. So you wanna be able to add as much training and as much experience as you can to your resume. So you have a better chance of getting the position. Great. So if you could go back to your high school self and give yourself some advice, um, about your future career, what kind of things would you would would you think would be important for you to hear then? Um, I would have probably told myself to focus more on a second language. I did take Spanish in high school, but I didn't really focus on it heavily. Uh, I just didn't think it was very important. Uh, and then I did take some more Spanish and I dated someone who spoke Spanish. So I was almost fluent in it and then I lost it. So I would say definitely emphasize learning a second language and emphasize learning Spanish if you can, especially um, in the United States, because that's a really common second language. And the second thing I probably would tell myself is to get better with money because we didn't really have much financial planning when I went to school. So I didn't really know how to budget. I didn't know where I could get grant money or how to fund my education. And I would have tried harder to take out less loans. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's becoming more and more of an issue for students that go on to continuing education. It's a, it is a, education is a great investment to make, but it also can be very, very costly. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, something to consider. So you did mention earlier something about, you know, that there are, you know, there's a lot of competition in social work um, and everybody's very competent. What is the, what is the demand overall? Like it, was it, there's a lot of jobs available and it's a matter of just finding the right match. Is it something that like if a high school student was going into that, are there good possibilities for them? Yes, I would say that you're going to have a better chance if you're living in a bigger area. Winona has pretty limited options. I think a lot of people in social work snatch up the good jobs and keep them. So the jobs that are typically available are jobs that have a low retention rate. So people go in and they burn out really fast, whether it's poor management, um, like their supervisors aren't supportive, or it's just like they're understaffed and can't handle the work because that's a huge thing in social work. So there are job opportunities. Winona is probably not the best place for them. If you're a new social worker, especially if you're a new social worker, you want to live in a bigger city because there's way more opportunities. Once you have your master's degree, I think you can definitely move to a smaller area and find more master specific jobs because that would be like hospitals, school counselors, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of um, ironic because my initial bachelor's degree was in social work and um, I couldn't find entry level jobs in Winona. So even if I wanted to come back to Winona, the, it, I couldn't. So I had to go somewhere else and get my, my experience and get my initial jobs out of the way and wasn't able to move back to Winona for many years um, for a job. Well, I mean, since then there've been a lot of changes in a master degree that came along, but the, um, 
the entry level positions for or for beginning social work positions in our area are tough to come by because people love our area. And so once they get a good job here, they stay here, um, which is great for us, but not great for uh, amazing students that are coming out of Winona State and St. Mary's as social workers and are looking for positions. So um, that has not changed much in the few years that I've been out of college. <laughs> Yeah, I know they're but that's <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, it's it's not a Winona only. It's a lot of smaller communities. Um, most of your beginning experience as social workers is in the large metro areas, which mm -hmm. there's goods and bads to that. It's with everything. So great. Well, anything else you want to share in terms of um, careers or exploration or? planning or things like that that you want to share with our students? Um, yeah, there's a couple of things. So I would say definitely get good with money. Figure out what your budget is and what your bare minimum to survive is going to be because even though you think you'll have a bachelor's degree and you'll get a job that will sustain you, it's really not as simple as that. So figure out what your student loans are going to cost, figure out if you have a reliable vehicle and if you'll need it and if you don't get one and find a way to pay for it um negotiate in your interviews like advocate for yourself even though you're new to the field you should be speaking up and explaining why you're a valuable asset for the organization and why maybe you deserve a little more pay um yeah oh and find out how you work best don't go into a position because you need a position because if it's something that you don't know that you'll, you're, you'll do great at, like office work isn't for everyone. If that's something you're not good at, don't try to force yourself into it because you'll make yourself look really silly. So um, if you think the people you're getting hired by are people you can talk to and share how you work best with, talk to them and see if there's ways to modify the position so it fits you better. Um, and if there's not, then maybe look for a different position. I remember when I graduated from college, I was just, I want any job, anything. I just need to be making money. And then I realized, wait, no, I, no, no, <laughs> I don't need anything. Let's be a little bit more specific here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was, I mean, it was really, I was very grateful when I found the right job. But at first, my gut instinct was, I need a job and I need a job now. And then I had to like, no, hold on, because I need to be able to stay in this job and be healthy and make enough money and pay my bills and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, yeah, it was it, it, that instinct to just take whatever comes your way is certainly there. So, yeah, well, hear. thank you again for your time, for your time today. Um, I really appreciate it. it. Your information is so helpful for our students. So I'm glad that you were willing to make the time today um, and be flexible with that. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Have a good day.